Happy are those who follow the ways of the Lord. God's ways are just and merciful. Those who follow God's ways are continually nourished in faith. In all that they do, they prosper. Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love. Let, let us celebrate God's mercy and justice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Papuri at pasasalamat sa iyo ang aming itinataas sa kagandahan ng umagang ito, Panginoon, na iyo pong ibinigay sa amin. Salamat sa pribilehiyo na kami ay muling magtipon-tipon sa Espiritu, Panginoon, at ikaw ay aming sambahin sa Espiritu at Katotohanan. Dalangin po namin ang patnubay at pangunguna ng inyong balon na spirito sa aming pagsamba sa umagang ito. Mangusap ka po sa bawat isang mga anak nyo na nasa kanilang mga tahanan, nakatunghay, nanonood at kasama naming sumasamba sa oras na ito. Patuloy na ihanda mo po ang aming puso, ang aming isipan sa pakikinig at pagtanggap at pagsasagawa ng iyong mga salita. Pangunahan mo kami, O Diyos, sa umagang ito. Ikaw ang aming itinataas, ikaw ang aming pinapupurihan. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to Knox United Methodist Church and welcome to our 9.30 worship service. Now, kung ito po ay first time ninyo na makapanood, mga kapatid, at kayo ay uh, kasama at kabilang ngayon sa pagsamba, welcome po sa inyong lahat. And I would like to suggest and even encourage uh, members of the church to please 
uh, send the, the link to your friends, to your loved ones, to those who are close to you so that they can become part of our worship service today. Now, marami ho tayong mga programa at gawain mga kapatid. Hindi ko alam kung paano ko pa iigsin itong mga announcements na ito. Eh. Eh, Ang dami nating mga programa. Ano po, sabi ko nga, panahon ng pandemya, eh, kung kailan panahon ng pandemya, eh, napakaraming gawain natin dito sa Knox United Methodist Church. And that is a sign of, of growth. That is a, a sign that we are indeed alive in the ministry and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, batiin muna natin yung mga nagdiriwang ng na kaarawan for this week, beginning today. And so, let's greet Chelsea Jean Castro. Yan, palakpakan ninyo si Chelsea. Nag-iisa lang ito, no, na birthday ngayon. Bukas, Monday, si kapatid na Ruth Ligaspi, Scarlett Fisico, and Granji Regodon. Yes, happy birthday to uh, the three of you. On September 21, Tuesday, si Eduardo Ragas, kapatid na Leiba John Masimo and Jane Lau. Happy birthday po, palakpakan natin. Sa so September 22, that's Wednesday, si An- Ana Ferrer Ligo, uh, Daisy Lourdes Eroles, Ofelia Palanog Barrietos. Hindi ba baryentos ito? Tama ba ako? Baryentos na nakalagay eh. Anyway, happy birthday sa inyo. On September 23, that's Thursday, si Maris Ortega. At sa September 24, that's Friday, si Kyle Grace De La Cruz, Sophia Lauren De La Cruz, and Rain Nathalie Naluz. And on September 25, that's Saturday, uh, si kapatid na Miriam Jane Santos and Katrina Joyce Asuncion. Uh, ibigay natin ang pagbati sa kanila sa pag-awit natin ng Happy Birthday Song. Yan. Awitin natin. Happy Birthday. Come on. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday. Let's pray, brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthday this week. We pray, Lord, that they will be accorded with your grace and love as they continue to make use of this life and allow this life, Lord, to become an offering to you. Strengthen them. Give them, Lord, the best of health, keeping them away, Lord, from any danger and any harm. And may you continue, Lord, to dwell in their lives as they continue to make use of this to honor you. I pray in the name of Jesus that the blessing of life and the gift of life will be upon them. And we lift up even their family uh, celebrating with them. Indeed, Lord, they are inspiration to those celebrating their birthday this week. We commend them unto your hands, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Mga kapatid, mayroon tayong mahalagang gawain. I'll start with the, uh, our activity tonight. Tama ba? Gabi ba yan, ano? Alas 7 ba yan? Nang gabi, yung ating Sunday School Festival. Yan. Kaya abangan ninyo, ang gagawin niyo mga kapatid, wag ho kayong... Ikangay kayo lamang ang nanunood. Huwag nating gawin na ang mga taganaks ay eh, sa kanila lang. What do I mean? Let's try to expand. Let's try to extend. That's how we do our responsibility to share, you know, the love of God to a lot of people. There are those who are close to us, those who are um, um, those who are friends of ours you may even ask them to join and uh, allow them to see what's, um, what, what we are doing in the church and how we do um, the ministry of the Lord. So, wag ko kayong mahihiya na ipadala yan at mag-anyaya kayo. Kumare, kumpadre, kakilala, ka-faith, ka-Facebook, ka-messenger, ka-chat, whatever, mga kapatid. Kailangang masanay po tayo 
na tayo po ay nagbubukas ng ating mga pintuan para sila naman po ay makatanggap ng biyaya mula sa Panginoon. So, 7 o'clock ang ating Sunday School Festival. Kung ano ang inyong makikita dyan, that I do not know. Huwag na ninyong isipin pa. Basta pumunta kayo, manood kayo, mamayang alas 7 ng gabi. Ngayon, sa darating na linggo, Christian Education Sunday. So, we have three uh, guest preachers. Uh, in our meads um, this coming Sunday. Sa umaga, sa Ilocano, 7.30, ay ang kapatid na P.B. Crisbo. Sa alas 9.30 ay ang Dr. Christina Manyabat. Yun, tumama na ako sa wakas. At sa hapon naman, sa contemporary, ang Diakonisa uh, Abigail Cruz, yan po ang mga special uh, preachers natin this coming Sunday as we celebrate Christian education. By the way, mga kapatid, um, meron tayong special giving para dito na ito ay mandato ng Philippine Central Conference. Ito ang Christian education special offering for the um, uh, Christian education and discipleship program of the church. So, Kakaroon din po tayo ng special offering for that. At uh, tayo po ay tatalima. We're part of the connectional uh, body of our church. At ganun din ay makakarinig tayo ng magagandang awitin mula po sa ating Christian education. Ano po? And uh, we would like to commend in advance uh, the um, Christian Education Committee under the Nurture Ministry for Uh, the splendid preparation for our Christian Education Sunday. Now, mga kapatid, papunta na tayo ng October. October is the anniversary month of this church. Please pray for it. By the way, this coming Monday, please join us in this prayer gathering at 7 o'clock in the, uh, in the evening. At ang host natin ay ang mga United Methodist men. Last uh, Monday, I would like to thank the WSES for hosting It was a very uh, fruitful, meaningful, and powerful night of prayer. And again, we will be uh, experiencing the work of the Lord uh, tomorrow at 7 o'clock, mga minamahal. Dumalo po kayo, mga kapatid. Dumalo po kayo. Especially ang mga council members natin, mga officers. You know, I'm looking at you. I am checking and I'm, um, in fact, uh, uh, trying to figure out where are you especially key leaders of the church, may I appeal to you that you must make yourselves visible in all the activities, programs, and ministries of the church. You are the leaders of our church and they are looking up to you. So I'm expecting that leaders of the church would be the prime movers. You will be there all the time. Pag meron ng mga activities, kayo po ang nakikita doon, mga minamahal na mga kapatid. Hindi lang ho yan para sa mga gagawa ninyo. This is for you. Now, the reason behind is simply because God is asking all the lay leaders of the church to become proactive in the ministry of the Lord. Hindi po kayo active lamang mga kapatid sa certain level, but you are active in all facets of the ministry of the church. And I do hope that you will be there. Opo, pinagmamasdan ko po kayo, making observations, especially mga key leaders natin, please be there. You're expected. There is good, of course, in coming together, especially um, during the time of what? Prayer. Yan po, magkita-kita tayo. Nako, ang mga kalalakihan, talaga naghanda, ano? Kaya, naniniwala ako sa mayamang gawain bukas. Ngayon, sa ating anniversary, please, Join us in prayer. Yung, tug, yung prayer gathering na yon para po sa anniversary yon para sa October activity. Meron po tayong healing uh, service. We have also evangelistic service. We have also our Thanksgiving service, which is uh, the culminating activity of our anniversary. We have also our latest Sunday. Lahat po na yan sinasama sa panalangin. And we are praying that God will lead us, especially at this time, Uh, that we are facing this pandemic and the classifications uh, being implemented by IATF. So we have to make a decision by the end of September 30 para nang sa ganun ay 
uh, magkaroon na po tayo ng ating tinatawag na mode of our celebration. Ngayon, mga kapatid, sa huling uh, Sunday, this is September 26, it's council meeting natin. Yes, uh, ito ay alauna ng hapon, so please be there, all the, the, the members of the council and those who will make a report. Ayan, mag-prepare po kayo ng report nyo. Again, the report should be a committee report, not the chair report. Yun po ang ating uh, titignan. And I think, ang ating minutes na na sa mga chat groups, uh, sa council chat group, if I... I'm, I'm correct, uh, if I'm not, I'm not uh, mistaken. So please, uh, download it, read it, mga kapatid, so we can uh, minimize uh, lengthy reading uh, during the council. Thank you so much for that. Uh, alam na ba ako nakalimutan, uh, mga Jaconisa? Oh, ito, may video nang? Uh, teka mo na, bago yun, ito po yung ating uh, replica covenant. Yan, pasting ng po ninyo mga kapatid ang envelope na yan. We are going to dedicate that uh, right now. I have here um, uh, envelopes. Mga kapatid, I have here envelopes. There are about 100 uh, envelopes here. Duly uh, printed and prepared. A new design and a new uh, caption and a new labeling. Building God's Temple. So, meron kayong uh, building, uh, rebuilding uh, the temple project. Tama po yun. Pero, alam niyo, every time we should have sub, you know, labels, subtitles. At this time, rebuilding God's Temple for our 123rd founding anniversary, mga kapatid. So, those who made a covenant with the Lord, kumuha na po kayo, padadala sa inyo, or you can get uh, your your envelope here. Um, kaya po, bigyan natin ng pansin ito, mga kapatid. As I have said, let me explain this again. Meron tayong replica covenant and we have the anniversary thanksgiving. The anniversary thanksgiving is for those who don't have any covenant at all with this one. Uh, Doon po kayo. Pero kayong may covenant na, wag kayong lilipat, mga kapatid, because it's an oath. Remember, when you make a commitment and and you made an oath before the Lord, God will never forget that. God will continue to deal with you until and when you begin to respond to that covenant. Kayong mga nasa anniversary Thanksgiving, mga kapatid, I know you want to contribute. I, want, I, I know that you want to share also for this project. But if God has blessed you, then you can transfer to the covenant which is the replica covenant. So, i-dedicate po natin itong mga kapatid. So, those who will be getting this, ay i-dedicate na po itong sobre. So, there would be uh, the spirit of blessing, this, there is the spirit of, of God's um, control and anointing to those who will get this. Let us dedicate this envelope, the replica covenant envelope, the rebuilding God's temple envelope, Lord God, we offer unto you these envelopes that will be distributed and that will be taken by those who made a covenant with you and offered unto you, Lord, their commitment for the rebuilding of your temple, O Lord. Bless it now. Let the anointing spirit be upon these envelopes that those who will, those who will receive this, Lord, will be blessed bountifully, enormously, and exponentially. I do believe, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that by the power coming from you, these envelopes, Lord, would become your instrument, to become your agent, to become your vessel of your abounding grace to all your people and upon your church. We commit, Lord, and dedicate this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. And so you can get your, your envelope now. Hurry up because we have limited um, pieces of the envelope. Yan. So, meron daw pong video ang mga grandparents and senior citizen, ano? Doon sa kanilang pasasalamat sa nangyaring napakagandang, uh, ano yun? Senior Citizen Fellowship and Grandparents Fellowship last Sunday. 
Yan talagang buma, no, bumaha ng mga mga salapi, no? <laughs> Prizes uh, para sa celebration na yan. So pa- panoorin natin 'to. Okay, parang bitin, ano? Parang nabitin ako dun sa pasasalamat na At any rate, congratulations. Palakpakan natin ang ating uh, seniors uh, fellowship. Alright? At um, the celebration of Grandparents Sunday. Now, I just want to announce this, that probably this coming Sunday, we will be also uh, showing to you or um, um, putting your, the list of those who gave, who gave their joyful giving last uh, celebration of our joy giving sunday so by sunday po siguro ay ipap flash din natin as a matter of, of showing our gratitude to them and praying that they will be blessed by lord more than what they have given so by sunday po ay makikita ninyo diyan yung mga nagbigay sa ating joy giving sunday i think by by congregation siguro yun ano ilocano tagalog english uh, and uh, contemporary. So, uh, we do hope that uh, the finance will be able to do that this coming uh, uh, Sunday. So, ito lang po mga pahayag at pagbati natin mga kapatid. Tayo po'y magpapatuloy sa atin pong pananambahan. Yes, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Okay, ngayong linggong ito, syempre, patuloy po nating kikilalanin ang ating mga uh, members, ang ating mga uh, kasama na uh, sila po ay graduate at uh, na, nabigyan ng awards. Yan. Kasi po ang linggong ito ay Recognition Sunday. Honoring our students, yan po. Recognition Day is the culmination of all hard work and a year of study. It is the day when our student can say, I've done it, and praise the Lord. Amen po. Today, ladies and gentlemen, mark another milestone in the life of our brothers and sisters who graduated and received an awards. This day is of giving praise for job well done. Let's watch this video. Today we give thanks to the Lord for our brothers and sisters who have reached academic milestones in the past year. We pray that the Lord will guide them and bless them in their next steps, using their studies for His glory. And now we present to you the graduates, awardees, and completers for school year 2020-2021. Therese Grace G. Sichango, graduate, kindergarten, with honors, English and Chinese department, artist award, performer award, integrity award, and great penmanship award. United Bethel Christian Academy of Manila. Elisha David S. Berdeen, Grade 1, Academic Excellence Awardee with Honors, Kiddy Integrated Developmental School. Jazzy Bernice D. Castillo, Grade 1, with High Honors, Children's School of Tomorrow, Bacoor, Cavite. Rankin Elion F. Dirige, Grade 2, with high honors, 
Santiago North Central School SPED Center. Achilles Halford L. Beltran, Grade 3, with high honors, Rank 4 in Nearpod, Rank 2 in Kubits, Rank 1 in Scilearn Fast Forward. Complete attendance, most participative in Filipino, Math, Science, and Computer. Sisters of Mount Carmel Catholic School. Pascal Elohim F. Dirige, Grade 4, with high honors, Santiago North Central School SPED Center. Francine Ayesha De Jesus, Graduate, Grade 6, Padre Gomez Elementary School. Zane Daniel R. De La Cruz, Graduate, Grade 6, Padre Gomez Elementary School. Kelvin Adonai F. Dirige, Graduate, Grade 6, with honors, passed the National Competency Exam for Philippine Science High School. Santiago North Central School SPED Center. Zyril Jane D. Liban, graduate, grade 6, Scholastic Distinction Awardee, School of the Holy Spirit, Quezon City. Sarah T. Rodriguez, graduate, grade 6, Dominican School, Manila. Andrea Kashika L. Beltran, grade 7, Valedictorian. Service Award, Carmelite Spectrum, Rank 4 in Scilearn Fast Forward, Rank 3 in Kubits, Rank 3 in Nearpod, Most Enthusiastic in the Field of Arts, Most Participative in Math, Science, Filipino, and CLE, Best in AP, and Best in Hele, Sister of Mount Carmel Catholic School. Zephania Chloe De La Cruz, Grade 8, Second Honor, Cayetano Arellano High School. Hannah Grace T. Rodriguez, Grade 8, Academic Excellence Awardee, with high honors, Dominican School, Manila. Angelica May A. Paiste, Grade 9, Top 6, Cayetano Arellano High School. Johan Reeds C. Ampaso, Grade 10, with honors, Loyalty Award, Philippine Christian University, Union High School of Manila. Jan Gabriel A. Rajal, Grade 10, Pasay City North High School Main Campus. Sophia Jade T. Setay, Grade 10, with honors, Ramon Magsaysay High School, Manila. Carl Vincent C. Dianco, Graduate, Senior High School, Top 4 Overall in Engineering, Gold Medalist, Manila Intellectual Property Innovation and Business Incubation. TISIAS Canada Special Honor of Invention Award Special Award in Robotics Presentation Special Award SolidWorks Science Math and Special Awards Pitching Competition Science and Math Fiati University Samuel James B. Vargas Graduate Senior High School Far Eastern University NRMF Kyla Beatriz A. Mendilio Second Year College, Dean's Lister, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. Nadine Crystal B. Bueno, Graduate, Bachelor of Music, Major in Piano Performance, University of Santo Tomas, Conservatory of Music. Timothy James E. Capili, Graduate, Bachelor of Science in Hotel and Restaurant Management, Top 5 Tagisa ng Talino Battle of Chefs, STI Kalaohan. Doctora Deborah S. Lucrecio, Graduate, School of Leaders, Class Valedictorian, Harvester Academy. Baby Ruth E. Rodriguez, Graduate, Accountancy, Business and Management, University of Santo Tomas. Remedios Genora V. Consuni, Graduate, Doctor of Medicine. Manila Central University. Christine Carissa S. Lucrecio, graduate, Doctor of Medicine, Far Eastern University, NRMF. Daniel Luis E. Puspos, graduate, Doctor of Dental Medicine. Magna Cum Laude, CEU Alumni Foundation Incorporated Gold Medalist for Outstanding Academic Performance. 
Bronze Leadership Award in Co-Curricular and Extracurricular Activities, Centro Escolar University. Joselito M. Paras, Graduate, Master in Management, Major in Public Administration, Philippine Christian University. Miriam Jane R. Santos, Graduate, Master of Business Administration, University of the Philippines. Congratulations to all our graduates, awardees, and completers for school year 2020-2021. May God continue to bless and challenge all our honorees, helping them grow into the person that He wants them to be and the person that the world needs. May He give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Psalm 20 verse 4 To God be the glory. Yes, let's put our hands together. Let's uh, give them a round of applause. Come on, church. Thank you so much. We congratulate those uh, members of our church who received um, this uh, honor. And uh, we recognize uh, their efforts, uh, their labor, and everything that they, have, that they have done in their studies and um, their educational uh, uh, pursuit of excellence. So congratulations. And in doing so, I would like each one of us to pause for a while and let's lift them up to the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you so much because you have blessed these uh, people with knowledge, with wisdom, with courage, with enthusiasm because they have lord accomplished great things for themselves as graduates honorees and awardees lord thank you so much for the blessing that you have given upon them during the time of their studies during the time of their um intention to complete um a level of uh, education that would become uh, uh, their uh, um, source of um, joy to become the source father god of their being useful in the society in the home and even in the family lord we thank you for everything that you have done for the past uh, so many years of um, rigorous uh, studies and learning May continue to bless them, Lord, as they look forward to another level of their pursuit of their career and profession. We lift them up and we give back all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Once again, congratulations to each one of you. And may you receive God's continuous blessing of life continuously uh, working uh, towards the fulfillment of your dreams and your aspiration. I salute each one of you. God bless you all. Magpatuloy po tayo sa pagbasa ng banal na kasulatan na pagbabantayan ng ating mensahe sa umagang ito. Mula po sa unang aklat ng hari, mga kabanata, labing siyam, talata isa hanggang labing tatlo. Ganito po ang sinasabi. Sinabi ni Haring Ahab sa kanyang asawang si Jezebel, ang lahat ng ginawa ni Ilyas at kung paano pinitay ni Ilyas ang lahat ng mga propeta ni Baal. Kaya't nagpadala si Jezebel ng isang sugo upang sabihin kay Ilyas, Patayin sana ako ng mga Diyos kung hindi ko gagawin sa iyo sa ganito ring oras ang ginawa mo sa mga propeta. Natakot si Ilyas na mamatay, kaya't umalis siya at nagpunta sa Berseba sa lupain ng Huda kasama ang kanyang utosan. Iniwan niya roon ang kanyang utosan at mag-isang pumunta sa ilang. Pagkatapos ng maghapong paglalakad, 
ay naupo siya sa lilim ng isang puno at nanalangi ng ganito. Yawe, kunin na po ninyo ako. Ako'y hirap na hirap na. Mabuti pa pong mamatay na ako. Pagkatapos, nahiga siya at nakatulog. Ngunit dumating ang isang anghel, kinalabit siya nito at ang sabi, Gising na at kumain ka. Nang siya ay lumingon, nakita niya sa may ulanan ang isang tinapay na niluto sa ibabaw ng mainit na bato at tubig sa isang lalagyan. Kumain nga siya at uminom, pagkatapos ay nahiga muli. Ngunit bumalik ang anghel ni Yahweh, ginising siyang muli at sinabi, Bumangon ka at kumain, pagkababa, napakahaba pa ng lalakarin mo. Kumain nga siyang muli at uminom, at ang pagkain iyo'y nagbigay sa kanya ng sapat na lakas upang maglakbay ng apat na pung araw at apat na pung gabi hanggang sa sanay, ang bundok ng Diyos. Pumasok siya sa isang yungib at doon nagpalipas ng gabi. Walang ano-anong nagsalita sa kanya si Yahweh. Anong ginagawa mo rito, Ilyas? Sumagot si Ilyas, Yahweh, Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat, ikaw lang po ang pinaglilingkuran ko sa tanang buhay ko. Subalit sinira po ng bayang Israel ang kanilang kasunduan sa inyo. Winasak nila ang inyong mga altar at pinatay ang inyong mga propeta. Ako na lamang ang natitira at pinapahanap nila ako upang patayin din. Ganito ang sagot sa kanya. Lumabas ka at tumayo sa ibabaw ng bundok sa harapan ko. Pagkasabi nito'y dumaan si Yahweh at umihip ng napakalakas na hangin. Sumabog ang bundok at nagkadurog-durog ang mga bato sa lakas ng hangin. Ngunit wala sa hangin si Yahweh. Nang tumigil ang hangin ay lumindol, ngunit wala sa lindol si Yahweh. Pagkalipas ng lindol ay kumidlat, ngunit wala rin sa kidlat si Yahweh. Pagkalipas ng kidlat, narinig niya ang isang banayag na tinig. Lumabas sa Ilyas, tinakpan ng balabal ang kanyang muka at naghintay sa bunganga ng kweba. Narinig niya ang isang tinig na nagsabi, Ilyas, anong ginagawa mo rito? Sumagot siya, Yahweh, Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat, ikaw lamang po ang pinaglilingkuran ko sa tanang buhay ko, subalit sinira po ng bayang Israel ang kanilang kasunduan sa inyo. Winasak nila ang inyong mga altar at pinatay ang inyong mga propeta. Ako na lamang ang natitira at pinagahanap nila ako upang patayin din. Sinabi sa kanya ni Yahweh, Bumalik ka sa ilang na malapit sa Damascus, Pagkatapos pumasok ka sa lunsod, buhusan mo ng langis si Hazael bilang hari ng Syria at si Jeho na anak ni Nimsi bilang hari naman ng Israel. Buhusan mo rin ng langis si Eliseo na anak ni Zafat na taga Abel Mehola bilang propeta na hahalili sa iyo. Ang makaligtas sa tabak ni Hari ng Israel ay papatayin ni Jeho. Ang makaligtas naman sa tabak ni Jeho ay papatayin ni Eliseo. Ngunit pitong, pito, pitong libo sa Israel ang ililigtas ko, ang mga taong hindi lumuluhod kay Baal at hindi humahalik sa kanyang imahin. Umalis si Ilyas at natagpuan niya sa Eliseo na nag-aararo. Labing dalawang paris ng toro ang ginagamit niya at kaagapay niya ng huling paris Pagdaan ni Ilyas sa tapat ni Eliseo, inalis ni Ilyas ang kanyang balabal at ibinalabal ito kay Eliseo. Purihin ang ating Panginoon sa pagkabasa ng kanyang mga salita.
Hello, yan. Salamat po sa awit na po na ating napakinggan. Yan ay mula sa uh, bagong uh, ano tawag dito, group uh, band, no? Kung meron po tayong mga K-pop, meron naman po tayong uh, K-jive. Yan. <laughs> Kung may K- K-pop ano, meron tayong K-jive. Yan. Oh, K-Jive. Tama ba yan? Oh, sila ang mga K-Jive. Alright. So, salamat sa inyo mga kapatid. What a wonderful rendition. Alright. Praise be to God. Ngayon mga kapatid, bago ako mag, uh, mag-share ng uh, salita ng Diyos, uh, nice ko pong uh, pabatid sa inyo na we are um, following the IATF regulations. What does it mean? That uh, the 10% uh, capacity um, will be implemented in this church. However, there is a requirement that each one should uh, provide. And that is for you to show your uh, vaccination card. There should be two doses or you have completed your vaccine or the job now we have you have also to follow the protocol that we have established inside the compound and within the facility of the church now when you get inside using uh, the uh, passage along the uh, battle knock school or along the uh, lope de vega street you have to take your temperature so we have a machine there then your name will be um, listed. And then you will go to the washing area. You have to wash your hands. And uh, you should follow the um, uh, protocol in the hand washing. Um, We do hope that uh, everybody will comply with that. And as you get inside the church, you have to, from time to time, wash your hands or even apply alcohol and into your hands so that would be a strict um, uh, compliance um, it, it's a strict compliance indeed with um, our measure to somehow uh, combat and to curb the uh, infection of COVID-19 so please bear with us mga kapatid now, this will also be uh, implemented during the anniversary. So, those who will be coming here, if you are a late person and you have involvement and you have a part in our worship service, then you must be fully vaccinated. Now, if, you don't, if you're not fully vaccinated, church, then you can become part of the service through recorded video. So, I do hope that this would be a guidance Uh, for each one of us, especially as we try to minimize our movement and um, gathering uh, inside the church. Mga kapatid, grabe po ang uh, hawahan ngayon ng COVID-19. It's not a joke. I do hope that you um, fully understood what I am trying to put across because this is very important for your safety and for the safety of those who are here. So thank you so much for bearing with us here with such kind of protocol and measures that uh, we would like to implement. Thank you so much. Now, as I have said, we are going to learn the message of the Lord today. 
Now, I do hope that you have your Bible with you because it's very important for us um, ready to receive the message of God with the Bible on our hands, the Bible on our lap, the Bible that is being seen, being read during the message. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come right now and to fill us, to give us wisdom and understanding as we listen to the very word that you would like us to know. May this message, O Heavenly Father, enable each one of us to become strong in our faith, to become strong in this life, to become strong in this world, filled with so much challenges and a lot of struggles. We commit unto you ourselves, Lord, as we prepare our hearts to receive it, as we prepare our minds to understand it, as we prepare our being, Lord, to become filled with it, so that each one of us, Lord, will continue to become dependent on you, that you alone, God, can change the course of this life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. How to face depression the biblical way yes you heard me right we're talking of depression how to face depression the biblical way now this is an important aspect in our situation today because this world is filled with so much um, um, fear anxiety and a lot of things and people are getting of uh, of tangent with their lives simply because they're being affected by this. Not only uh, because of pandemic, but because um, economically they are destitute and they have no income, they have lost their job, um, they are not uh, working fully and they lost the interest in living. So, with this situation um, at hand, we are looking at the situation as depression. Now, remember that as far as health care is concerned, in the Philippines and elsewhere, I want you to know that health situation or mental situation or mental health is indeed being challenged. And a lot of people are in this level of their mental situation. Many people are depressed. Not only those who have already um, created upon themselves and who have already experienced a full-blown depression, but mind you, there are those people who are beginning to have depression, but they don't know it. Maybe you are looking at someone else and probably you're thinking that you're okay, but in fact, you're not okay. Sometimes we felt that everything is going well in us, but the truth is that we are beginning to develop depression without noticing it. Unconsciously, church, we are now having the first stage, the first level of depression. Now, how to face it is something that would interest each one of us. And what kind of um, facing we're going to do here? It is the biblical way. It is not the psychological way, okay? It is not about the psychiatric way, but it is the biblical way. Let's see. Maybe the biblical way can give us some kind of, of direction on how to deal with our depression. Maybe the biblical way would be the best approach on how we would be able to circumvent the effect of depression in our lives. And this is something that will enable each one of us to understand how God will make his way for you to get out from your situation, from your depression. Now, there is a story here, church, that uh, 
would become the basis of our discussion, and this is the story of Elijah. Elijah is such an example of this, and he was one of God's great prophets. After successfully defeating the followers of Baal, it did not stop there. Elijah became exhausted and, this, um, and, and, um, and uh, physically ruined, drained, and fell into a deep depression. And let's try to look at the story of Elijah. Maybe this story and this message is for you. Maybe church, you're looking at this uh, as, as God's message to you, as God's revelation to you. Because what we are now facing in this world is mental issue. And we would like us to have the biblical um, message to become our healing uh, mechanism and be able to get out from this situation. Now, if you want to also, you may even share this to your friends who are experiencing this level of depression. Now, let's, let's look at, of course, um, all right, so I have this picture. I, I hope this one is clear in your screen. All right. Now, this is a story of Elijah having a confrontation with the prophets of Baal. Now, I just want you to a little bit rewind when um, Elijah challenged the, prophet, the prophets of Baal with, you know, making an altar and putting their uh, sacrifices and burning those sacrifices without without lifting anything to create a fire or doing something that will create a fire and so what happened was i'm just i will just make it um, a little bit uh, concise so that we can um, uh, optimize our time here so to cut the story short the prophet of baal you know put there their sacrifices on top of the altar, they prayed whole day. They prayed and, and asking Baal to come and um, show his power and uh, send the fire so that there would be fire on top of their altar table as they give their sacrifices to Baal. Now, when nothing happened <laughs> in the course of prayer of the prophets of Baal, um, Elijah made his turn and he, and he said all right for you to see the power of my god they they poured in water around the altar and and um, elijah instructed them pour more water more water and so when the sacrifice um elements were uh, doused with water elijah prayed and he asked God to send fire, and lo and behold, the fire came, and the sacrifices were burnt. Church, that was the show of power by God through Elijah. But here it is. This is a story. There was an agreement that who, whoever wins this uh, battle and this confrontation uh, they will be uh, killed they will be slaughtered and so what happened was that the prophet of Baal the prophets and all of them were killed now when king um, when the king learned of this he was saddened and when um, his wife Jezebel noticed the loneliness of the king, Jezebel made an effort and made a move to 
take after Elijah. And so Elijah ran away. He ran for his life. And if you listen to the, the reading of the text just a while ago, you will notice here that Elijah ran away. He went to Mount Carmel and he hid himself inside the cave because of his fear. Now, I want you to look at this feeling of defeat. Remember, Elijah won. Won the cause. Won the battle. But instead of celebrating, he ran for his life because Jezebel would like to take his life. And then the only recourse for Elijah is to go somewhere and hid himself inside a cave. Now, I would like us to look at Elijah's symptoms. Maybe these symptoms would uh, lead us on uh, how we uh, figure out whether or not we are in this level of depression or probably we're experiencing depression in our lives. Maybe you do not know it, you can ne never notice it, but listen to this. Sometimes, church, when you are perturbed, when you are agitated by some problem, and your, your mind is not functioning well, when your mind is telling you that you are nothing, when you cannot even process what you think and what you see, when there is fear in you, when there, there is rejection in your life, then there is this moment of depression. When you have anxieties and when you cannot even take uh, charge of, of these anxieties and, and you begin to, um, um, when we begin to think so much that life is as bad as it is, then depression is getting through. Now, let's see if these symptoms would be the symptoms, symptoms that you have. Let's see if you are in the same level of Elijah's symptoms or probably you are in the same boat with Elijah. Let's look at Elijah's symptoms. Number one, Elijah is fearful. Take note. Elijah is fearful and anxious. I want you to look at that. Elijah is fearful and anxious. Now, let's look at uh, All right, let's see. Verse 3. Look at verse 3. After what had happened, in verse 3, Elijah was afraid. Now, that's the first symptom that you have to, um, to note. Elijah is fearful. So, here, Elijah was afraid. Brothers and sisters, in Christ. Now, what does it mean? When you are afraid, you want to run for your life. Meaning to say, you want to get out. You don't want to face your problem. You do not want to face what you have in life because you are afraid of it. Now, when you are in that situation, church, then depression is creeping in. Your depression is getting through your nerves and you don't want to mobilize yourself. You don't want to think. You don't want to do things, church, because you are afraid. Depression or depressed persons frequently experience a nebulous, generalized sense of malaise. There is pessimism about the future that causes fear. Elijah feared his life, even though it would appear that the greatest threat to him had already been overcome at Carmel. Elijah was afraid. So, 
if you are anxious of what's happening in your life today, then the first stage of depression has come unto you. Now, if you're anxious of what to eat, if you're anxious of your livelihood, if you're anxious of what's happening in the world because of pandemic, because of this, this virus, when you're afraid of doing something that would somehow resolve anything that you are fearful about church, then you have that symptom of depression like Elijah. Let's move on. All right? The next symptom that each one of us should see here is that Elijah is physically and emotionally spent. Elijah is physically and emotionally spent. How is that? In verse, verses 3 and 4, Elijah ran for his life. If you look at the church, Elijah ran for his life. And that is something that would, you know, bother each one of us because every time that we are afraid, we always run. We do not want to face it. We do not want to uh, take head on on our situation. Okay? He stayed. In fact, in verse 4, let me read it. While he himself went a day's journey into the desert. Imagine, imagine he is physically and emotionally spent, meaning to say he, he kept on running and running and running. And according to, to verse 4, he himself uh, take a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree and sat down under it and prayed he might die. I had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Take no church. Elijah, in this story, is physically, he is emotionally stressed. Now, how is that into your life if you're looking for the second symptom of Elijah? Are you physically and emotionally spent? Come on. Tell me now. What does it mean? Church, sometimes when, when we are, you know, tired and, and we do not want to do things right when, and we are in the moment that we always uh, think of something, we, we keep on thinking a lot of things, even things that will never happen, things that... You know, we begin to ask the question, if, if, and if, and if. You have that, if you have that question of if and if, you are emotionally spent. Elijah was thinking of his, his life. He's thinking of his death. He's thinking it's something like when, when, when Elijah was, you know, when running and running and running, he's thinking, what if Jezebel sent her soldiers and catch upon me and I will be killed. What if I will be going somewhere else? You know, that's the emotional spending, the spending of Elijah. Now, if you have this symptom of Elijah, then you are distressed or uh, you, have, you are depressed. Number three, Elijah is feeling low self-esteem. Now, let's go back to, to verse 4. All right? Uh, okay, verse 4. Look at this, church. Elijah is feeling low steam. 
Verse 4. He said, I have had enough, Lord. He said, Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Imagine he's thinking of what? He's thinking of himself as a person who is not better, who is lesser, who is not good, comparing himself to his ancestors. You know, that's the kind of thinking Elijah had. Imagine um, he wishes to die. When you are having this feeling of low steam, you want to end your life. And that's the reason why a lot of people would kill themselves and commit suicide simply because of this low steam. You know, the feeling that they are nothing. They are useless. They are, you know, dejected and nothing more that they can do. And this was the situation of Elijah. Elijah is feeling low steam. If you think that you cannot do anything because of pandemic, you're wrong. If you think right now that this um, variant and, and contamination managers, um, these things are getting through your nerve and you cannot even think properly, church, then you have this symptom of depression like Elijah. Another thing is that he indulges in self-pity. In verse 4, he said, I'm no better than my ancestors. Elijah felt so much, you know, distressed by indulging in self-pity. There is self-pitying of himself. Something like he's simply saying to himself, well, I am not good, I cannot do it, I am no longer uh, the person you are looking, uh, looking up, um, and, and I, I, I cannot do it, I'm, I'm useless, I am nothing. You know, when you are in that situation and telling yourself that you have lost your life and lost your enthusiasm, you are pitying yourself, and that's another symptom of Elijah. Another symptom here is that Elijah is feeling lonely and rejected. Now, if you look at verse 10, church, He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Elijah is feeling lonely and rejected. There is, this, there is a sense that no one really cares or under, understands him. There is rejection. You know, that's the feeling of Elijah. You know, when you have that kind of feeling, you have the symptom of depression. When you feel that nobody will, will believe you, that nobody will take care of you, nobody will love you, that nobody will look, will, will look at you, church, then you are now beginning to have that level of, of depression. And that's the symptom that we can find. In the life of Elijah. The last symptom is Elijah becomes critical of other people and hostile toward them. You see? He is blaming. <laughs> Look at this. He is blaming now what's, what, what had happened to him. The Israelites were blamed. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. You turned down your altars. He is now blaming. He is pointing his fingers to those people who cost him his life. Church, when you begin to blame, when you begin to say that your situation is because this person, that person, that situation, then you have the symptom of Elijah of having sense of depression. Now let's move on. Now, we need a therapy. You know, when you are experiencing church, um, some kind of, you know, depression, normally in this world, in the medical world, they will tell you, you go to a psychiat psychiatrist, you go to a psychologist, you go to somebody for counseling and many others. But this time, I would like to invite you to see God's therapy. 
God has a therapy, and, and, and the God has um, dealt with uh, Elijah completely and wholly, and God actually made a way to allow Elijah to return back to his normal ways, to be able to stand up again and become enthusiastic in his ministry and his life. Now, the first therapy of God. Get up and take care of yourself. That's the first therapy. Let's read verse 5. And our Bible says is this. Look at your Bible. 5. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. At, all at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. So that, that's the first therapy of God to each one of you listening right now, church. If you are on that symptoms, if you have those symptoms in life that you've felt that you are depressed, church, you go to God because God will give you his therapy. And the first therapy in this particular text in verse 5, all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. You have to get up. You don't have to lay down, lie down. You don't have to stay where you are and feeling dejected and lonely. You get up. You get up. And you take care of yourself. You eat. You put something in your body to make you well. The next therapy is busy yourself with productive activity. In verse 11, it says... The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and a powerful wind tore the mountains apart and the shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Church, the second uh, therapy of the Lord to Elijah is He's telling Elijah, you have to busy yourself with productive activity. You know, the reason why people are getting depressed because they're doing nothing. You know, when you become idle and you're doing nothing, church, definitely your mind will control you. Your thinking will dictate your body. Now, how to circumvent it is by way of doing something. Find yourself um, with, with something that, that would make you productive. And that's, you know, the command of the Lord. You go out and stand on the mountain. You get out, you, you move, you do something. Do some productivity for yourself. And, and here, he instructed Elijah to get out. You go and see the mountains. You go and, and feel the wind. You know, this is how God is telling each one of you. If you are sitting down out there and trying to cry all throughout with your problem, sitting down and thinking of what had happened into your life, church, God is telling you that you have to get up. You have to make yourself busy. You have to make yourself fully well because that's how you deal with it. Because God is the one telling you to get out. God is the one telling you to do something for yourself. Because the only way that you can get up is yourself and no one else. Remember, Elijah was alone. Nobody was with him. It is between Elijah and God. And who is the one helping Elijah? While God is commanding, it is Elijah himself. No one else. And then third, renew your relationship with God. And this is what the Lord is telling Elijah. You have lost contact with me. You have lost communication with me. In Kings Chapter 19, verse 13. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here? You see, there was this conversation between Elijah and his God. It was after, of course, the, the, the uh, battle. Um, after the battle, 
Elijah experienced communicating and talking to his God. And that's something that we have to establish in our lives today. I know that pandemic is giving us so much problem. Pandemic is giving us so much headache, church. But I tell you, you have to make communication with God. If you fail to do that, do it now. Because Elijah started to communicate. He hid himself inside the cave. He was so afraid. He, 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 he does not want to get out. He has lost his sense of direction. But you see, God is telling him, why don't you establish your communication with me? Why don't you establish now your relationship with me? Get out, he said. He pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mountain and started to graze, to gaze upon the, the environment and, and um, be able to see the beauty of God's creation. And lastly, church, admit your li limitations and get help. In, in verse 14, he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. Church, what does it mean? In this particular, um, partic particular verse, Elijah would like to tell the Lord God that he has limitations. Even his zealousness has limitation. Even what he had done would give himself limitations. And he said, I am the only one left. And here, Elijah was asking that God will give somebody to help him because I am the one left. You have to admit your limitation, church, and you have to admit that you're alone and that you need somebody who will be with you who can help you deal with your depression. You know what? It is good that in this story, if you will continue the story, Elijah was able to regain his self. Elijah was able to look forward and, and to return to his normal ways. And he began to again assume his work as a prophet of God. And he discovered that there are a lot of people who are still waiting for him. There are a lot of people who were there looking for him. And Elijah was able to get out from his depression and be able to strive again and do what God wills him to do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Today, maybe each one of us and some of us here would be in this situation like Elijah. Remember, God's therapy can help us be able to overcome all of this. Remember that it is God who will enable us to become strong in all our struggles, in all our struggles in all our struggles, in all our troubles. May God be with you as we face, as we face our depression in various ways, in our own situations. And God, who is there, will enable us to succeed and to come up victorious because of God's presence. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen.
Amen. Praise be to God sa map, uh, mapagpalang mensahe ng buhay na ating pong napakinggan sa umagang ito. Magpatuloy po tayo mga kapatid sa pagkakaloob mula po sa Malakay chapter 3 verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not be room enough to store it. Para po sa ating mga kaloob, nasa ating pong uh, screen ang ating GCash account and BDO account kung saan maaari nyo pong i-deposito ang inyo pong mga tithes, offering, and thanksgiving. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you have your deposit slip, if you have your Gcash um, slip, just lift that up and I'm going to pray for you. Lord God, we offer unto you uh, a portion of our earnings. We give it to you, O God, for the advancement of thy work and of thy word. And I pray, Father God, that you will bless those who have given their tithes and their offerings and what they can give for you. Because this is their bounden um, um, expression of their love for you. The, the love for your church and the love for the ministry that you have endowed upon them. Lord God, I pray that as you bless them, may you open up, Lord, provisions, opportunities for them to earn more. For I declare it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and Amen. For our closing hymn, let us sing, But I Know Whom I Believe In.
This is time for each one of us to come into the presence of God, to pray, to lift up unto the Lord our cares, all the things that, uh, um, that concerns our family, our work, and anything that would like to ask the Lord of um, His uh, presence, provisions, His power, and uh, His uh, disclosure upon each one of us. Let's bow heads and pray. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity that you have given to each one of us. The opportunity, Lord, to come together in worship, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to become part of thy work. Because you have spoken to each one of us and you have made us, Lord, stronger than before because of you. You have asked us, Lord, that we would be able to win the battle against our troubles, against our fears, that we will win, Lord, in this fight against COVID and pandemic because we have God who will always be there like what Elijah had experienced. That while running away because of his fear, while he is so much depressed of what had happened, when he felt nothing is doing well for him, that you came along that you have called Elijah, that you have asked Elijah to do something and to get out from hiding. And this is what you're asking each one of us. There are those people, Lord, who are so much distressed and distressed and, and even pounded with so much fear and anxiety in life because of what's happening in our society in the world today because of this pandemic many have lost their job they're still looking for a job lord there are those who would like to meet both ends well there are those oh god who have business but it's getting bankrupt there are those father god who are earning less and i pray lord that while they are experiencing these conditions and and situations in life I know that you will send your angels to talk to them right now. And as I pray, those who are in this situation, I want you to open your heart and speak before God. Communicate with the Lord. Have that relationship with the Father who is in heaven. He is listening right now. He is talking right now. He is waiting for each one of you to say what you feel, to say your cares and what you want God to do for yourself, for your family, for your work. I know that the Lord is waiting for you. He is asking you to get out from the cave of your fear. You get out from the cave of your depression, of your brokenness in life. Get out and see the wonderful and powerful work of God that He can provide all our needs. Even during this pandemic, he will allow you to see his great work, providing all the means for you. That this God whom we serve is the same God yesterday, today, and in the future. He is the same God who will do something great for you today. God will make you fruitful, successful, and you are indeed God's mighty work. I pray, Lord, that those who are praying for themselves, those who are having anxiety, those who are having depression, I declare, Lord, that they will respond to your call and this situation be gone right now. They will allow themselves, Lord, to be open to what God is going to do, to do things all right, and to see the work of their hands, to become victorious, powerful, and successful. Lord, I pray right now that those people are praying with their special concern will be filled with your love, will be filled with your power. And right now, Lord, your power will be upon them because miracle will happen right now and you will open up possibilities and opportunities for them. It's already in their hands, in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you so much because you have spoken. Thank you, Lord, that you have filled our day with so much enthusiasm 
that no matter how difficult our situation is right now, Lord, we have joy. We can sing beautifully and powerfully because our God is with us. He's walking with us. He is carrying us all throughout this situation. And nobody will get wrong because God is with us. Lord, thank you so much for those people who received the blessing of healing. We thank you, O oh God, for those who received the blessing of being removed from their um, difficult situation. Those who have been healed from COVID, those who have been praying for, for their, this business, those who are planning to go abroad, Lord God, I pray that right now, your manifestation of your will and power will be with them. Lord, we thank you and we remember what you have done for all of them. Continue, Lord, to manifest upon them, Lord, that they will see this strength of, of physical capability that they can work, they can do things aright because of you. Lord, we remember the uh, 40 day, 40th day of passing of Brother Roed Gabiola. We thank you, O oh God, for his life. We thank you, O oh God, for his inspiration, for his joy, for his family. We thank you, O oh God, that you have been so faithful to them. Um, and you have given them, Lord, comfort during the time of their loneliness, the time of their mourning. Lord, continue to uphold them with your love, with your power, that we thank you for the life of Roed Gabiola. We even lift up the entire family for you will embrace them with your love and with your care. Lord, we pray for our church. We pray, Father God, for the ministry that you have um, given us. We, Lord, pray that all our celebration will be for your exaltation and for a manner of acknowledging that you are the source of life. And we give honor unto you with all these programs, ministries. It is not us. It is not about the leadership of each one, but it is you who will be exalted and be lifted up. Lord, we commit the whole week unto your hands. Protect us. Keep us away from any danger, Lord. Give us, Lord, the strength like the strength of an eagle. And allow us, Lord, to soar because you are there giving us the power, Lord, to claim this victorious life and allowing us, Lord, to see your work in us and through us. We give back all the praise and glory for this is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, and those who prayed with me may now shout, Amen and Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come to the end of our worship service it is my hope and prayer that each one of us received God's anointing. Amen. I just want you to lift your hand and say to yourself, I receive God's anointing. I receive Jesus Christ's manifestation of his healing. You declare upon yourself that the Holy Spirit has given you this comfort that you can go on no matter how difficult your ways would be that we are being touched by this special touch of our Lord. And so as we end, I would like you to receive the blessing. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you, be upon us all, now and forever. Amen.